all right what is up y'all um today i'm supposed to be doing maintenance that's a big thing right now you might hear me say that a lot in case uh all these videos come out at the same time but today there's some local places around that are that are calling you know they own several chains or not chains several bars that we're gonna go take a look at they're trying to rebrand and reopen uh some of them so i have a walk-in cooler icing up and i think a bar cooler and uh, he wants me to go and walk through some of the ac unit so i guess uh nothing's been checked i just got a call from uh or he gave me the contact info for a Jamie fix it. So I guess I'm gonna meet their handyman right now. Um, he's probably a little bit late cause he was out, it was like 15 minutes further than I was, but I was just, you know, I'll stop for some gas, get a little bean and cheese taco and uh, just wait for them. So it sucks or trying to do this because I have to go do maintenance, but I kind of like it cause I don't have to go do maintenance right now so uh, i'm always procrastinating with that stuff because they always give us deadlines for these uh, commercial accounts uh, i have until uh, i haven't i have like two weeks or a week and a half now to finish 22 ice machines yeah so we did a few i'm not too concerned tomorrow we're gonna have a day where all the guys can uh get together and do something um or do them so we don't have to have that issue and here come the lawn care guys so let's let's get down and check and see if I can record. It's gonna be an old uh, building, old units. Getting back to my roots. That's what I love to do is fixing up old equipment. Or you know, we have to. We'll tell them we'll change them out. I don't think they want to do change outs though. So uh, let's see what 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 happens. They also have a true bar cooler not working. This might have to wait till tomorrow though. Things are old. Tosa, I've never seen one of those. That one's actually working. And yeah, a whole bunch of. If you guys worked in bars, you kind of understand. All right, so this is one of those, just see if it works, right? So he just showed me a quote for 404 solenoid coil, which I'm, it wasn't labeled as to whether it was a freezer or cooler, a uh, solenoid coil and a uh, body. So the valve and coil and a leak repair, I guess. So he's like, we kind of got screwed there. This is not working. The freezer, I think, is working. Right here, it says negative 20. That one is the one that, um, I'll show you guys right now. He said it was icing up, but it's uh, probably just running too long because it has... So that could just be uh, set too low and it's running too much. I've not, it's working, I'm not really checking that. I wanna know why this is not cooling. Just makes it that much easier when all the panels are missing. So I'm still gonna go to the roof to check everything. I'll turn it back on. That solenoid coil must be up by the condenser because I don't see it here. Not too bad. Let's turn the shady breakers back on. And I turn this one off. Okay. 
so on that far left one it was blowing a lot of air this one wasn't i noticed the blades they're going to need new blades anyway because they're cracked but they're not going to want them um they were flat the blades so i didn't feel too much air so i kind of just bent them to curve them a little bit and then uh right now i'm getting much better airflow and that great honestly it's still the left side's still way better this one is cracked i know that i didn't check that one but let's go on the roof and see it's probably low on charge or something all right how the f do i get up there that's my unit or both that crooked one is the cooler obviously that's the freezer ice is not bad but like i don't think it's shutting off all right they're not open no big deal but that would be the easiest spot but there's a door there's a bunch of stuff over there I'm just gonna hop over the side it's a mini mini wall so not a big deal i can't get through the back all right we made it up here oh they got three units all right so it should be running i don't hear anything he said to watch out because somebody <laughs> there's our coil that's that new coil that was cool this is all shot to hell get that got our old exhaust over there let's open this bad boy up but that's why it's not cooling i see new caps that's gonna be the one i guess that they charge for a solenoid i saw that in the bill and this was just a few weeks ago three weeks ago maybe i didn't even notice this this is our disconnect i gotta make sure to be careful on right we do have power to every line set here so what the hell is that try not to shock myself This goes to the other one. I know that's the freezer. I mean, the freezer feels frozen like it's cold. Yeah, we got a timer on this side. Jeez, Louise is gonna be fun, right? So like I said, I'm just trying to see what turns on and I have, I am, I'm backed up. I don't have time to be making this look pretty and stuff so let's play the game of what works and what doesn't on something like this uh more than likely there is capacitors so you don't want to check those or if it's tripped on a pressure switch or something like that that's that's the main concern overload too high dirty coil but if they're both off then you have something that's cutting out power to everything which could still be a pressure switch or something like that so it's engaged. Let's see the voltage here. That's what I was talking for. I'm hoping it's an electrical issue and I don't have to stay here too long. So we got 240. And we got 240. Holy shit. Okay. Not what I was expecting. All right. Can we shut this off? Yes, we can. So we are calling, just nothing comes on. So it turns on. Let me can't see it from this angle. Let me just double check that there's no broken wires either. All right, so this, you can tell it looks new, right? So we'll check that right now. That's easy to check and then we'll, we'll go to, when we want to this one, you just wanna take them off and discharge them. I don't see them swelling up or anything, but if you ever change on a single phase, the capacitor, change your potential relay. So if these, Considering how old it is and how like rough it looks, uh, if these contacts are, are getting stuck 
sticking, welded shut, whatever it may be, you're gonna keep popping capacitors. So we're gonna find out right now if that's what the issue is. This is your uh, your start here. So maybe it's not giving it that that run and then or that jump start. And then I'm gonna check the fan because the fan might be on a, a pressure control. That's why that one's not on. Okay, we got microfarads and now we're checking the start. And that is working, so they that didn't give out. And let's check the next one. And here we have a 50. <clears throat> it's off a bit, but it's not bad. Pop the top off. Lovely, bro. So I don't know if that's new or old oil, but there's definitely a leak here. You can see it all the way through. So I need to check right there. They put it in the best spot to check your terminals. You can tell they've already checked. All right, compressor checks out. Continuity all the way through. I'm still checking for continuity. Pulled off what was feeding the wire. This is a uh, basically a fan cycle, pressure control, whatever you want to call it. And we don't have anything. I'm just assuming that this is all fine because obviously if they charge them for it or charge everything for it, you know, this is working. So the way it's rigged up is that it's calling, but the pressure controls are keeping the uh, components out of the uh, the circuit. So let me put this back together and we'll check pressure. I just wanted to make sure before I tapped into it. All right, guys, I just wanted to kind of stop the video real quick and explain. I initially thought I was going to have more time with this unit and I'll get into explaining why or what happened there. But basically those two yellow wires were for the fan cycle uh, control. That's what I checked. I also checked the capacitors. Now it looked like they, they replaced the start capacitor and not the run. The run was out of range. And I think the potential relay just from experience was not working correctly. It did randomly, from what I can remember, because this was a, this was a few weeks back. Um, I think it randomly turned on because it was not obviously. We went up there, the contactor was engaged. If the contactor is engaged, all the pressure controls are closed. The at least for the compressor, so no high head, uh, no loss of charge was tripped, anything like that. It was something else that did not start the compressor. The only other thing, in a single phase, as far as like what was in the video is we're not getting that start compressor jump start, which that's the potential relays um, job. Now, I don't get too technical. I don't really get into how they work and why they work and, and what they do and all that. I just know that potential relay initially gives you that that jump start through the jump, uh, start capacitor, and then it takes it out of the circuit and then just goes through the run capacitor. So if it's not working correctly, if it's not opening and closing the way it should be, uh, we're not getting that. If you guys have any other theories or questions, you know, you can leave them in the, in the comments. But essentially, the whole unit worked. It ran for a little bit. It did cool. If you pay attention to the um, TXV when I'm checking the leak in there, it's it started sweating and all that. So, like, it was cooling, working, all that. Just we, if you ever change a capacitor or anything in that little component area, you can even change out the contactor too. Usually those get pitted, but at least change out the two capacitors and the potential relay. Every time I've tried to change one, I get called back for the other. So this could have been the same thing, a call back for the other components. We need to change out all three. And uh, if you guys want to look at the wiring diagram, you can see you know all the, the pressure controls, the fan cycle control, um, how everything ties in together and if you guys want to look at that then go ahead but just wanted to uh, quickly explain that Was a coil repair. I think I saw that they did a coil repair. Leak repair. 
So I'm not seeing anything down here. I'm getting like a trace of stuff here. It could be like distributor. I think this whole dryer needs to be changed out and I would also ship Pretty sure y'all can see it. I can't see with the screen, but yeah. So they try to leak lock this whole shit, but uh, we're gonna quote. Uh, I don't know where the dude went, but I don't have time today. But we're gonna quote out. Obviously, not gonna put any freon in it. No, no, don't wanna waste any refrigerant. So that's about 100 psi in there. We have to recover that. Cut this out dryer to put a new dryer with a new line set going up i'm not going to put a king valve and just get them by i mean that's mainly what they want put that in you got two service valves here so i'm not worried about that it's just, it's super old i don't want to put i don't want to go crazy with it all right so that's a good one i'm actually kind of excited because i love working on old, old equipment but it needs a lot of work rookie mistake i forgot i was going to bypass the the fan, I don't think I ever saw it come on. I, I should have bypassed the fan to make sure we did need the motor too. Like I said, the evaporator looks a little rough, but there's nothing too wrong with it. It might have micro leaks. I couldn't see anything distinct. That distributor gave me like the smallest micro bubble and I, I wasn't convinced enough. So I'm just gonna tell them like at that point, I'm not gonna try and fix that part. Somebody already fixed a couple of U-bends the other U-bends don't look too hot, and um, it's just it's just what they what they store in there, right? Anything acidic, it's a beer cooler, but I think they also have food in there. So like anything acidic in restaurants just eats at the coil. So considering how old it is, that copper, you can see that it's pitted in multiple areas, which is what I'm concerned about, to where like that copper is no good, right? Uh, it's not gonna hold, and you're gonna get a bunch of micro leaks. So Get all that squared away i gotta do the quote but i gotta do maintenance uh come back tomorrow that walk-in freezer i just want to change out that temperature control because it has that old school um adjustable one with the with the cut in and difference and all that like a pressure control so if we can just wire in a and just even a mechanical control that would be way better it's going to negatives they don't really have ice cream or anything like that, but I doubt that it's ever shutting off, except for maybe defrost because it's not iced up. So I'm gonna quote all that, we'll be back, and then we'll get all that squared away. All right, so just real quick, sometimes this happens. So I, I literally got left on red from a customer. Now, this is why we don't really deal with uh small mom and pop shops like anymore like that's not our target uh we deal with a lot of fast food chains national well-known establishments where you know we, we know we're gonna get paid so when you deal with mom and pop shops or local places that only have like one or two locations local to you right like i, I literally mean like they're only local to you right it's not like a a franchise with a local owner or anything like that i mean like a small place small restaurant small shop whatever it is you don't know you don't know them that that's how we look at it right you and we had this conversation in one of my chats um where somebody asked me how do i deal with new customers as far as like paying and stuff like that 
for the most part, any big ticket item, 5,000, 10,000, like if that's what they're asking you to come and quote out and then you get the bid, um, by all means, take a deposit, a half down deposit, whatever it may be, uh, just so that you know you're not losing money. Because like the last thing is like you do the work and you're trying to chase uh, the money down and all that. So the co the customer for this local bar owner, I'm not going to put any names out, but uh, he wanted the world is what I was telling my dad and stuff. I was like, yeah, I was like, cause I was the one dealing with him. It was my dad's neighbor. Probably said too much there, but um, it got recommended and, and this and that. But basically I got to that other location. I had already checked a bar cooler for them before that I had got kind of working, but he wanted to know if I could put a leak seal in because I told him the evaporator is essentially leaking. All right, I got ahead of myself a little bit. Initially, we went out there to see if this thing even turned on the bar cooler. I ran into a, na a rat's nest of wiring, spliced stuff, and ex like the power cord to the thing wasn't even working and hooked up right. And whoever was there previously just cut everything up. So I had to fix all that wiring put everything back together and then test out the compressor and everything else with it. We found out that it was working, but it had a leak obviously. So topped it off. That's what he wanted that day. We were going to do another, like another trip to do the leak seal that he wanted because after that, he's like, I'd probably just end up buying a, another one, a used one or something. So he's like, did you go, have you gone to, to, to do the bar cooler yet? I was like, no. And then in the video, you saw that they had me checking a walk-in. They were also curious about the walk-in freezer. So the cooler, the freezer, a bar cooler. And then he's like, oh, like text me the whole time. While you're there, can you do a walkthrough of the HVAC and this and that? We're going to get inspected. We're trying to open up already. Like like I said, he wanted the world, right? I kept telling the guys because I was dealing with the maintenance guy and 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 the, uh, the, the owner was texting me. I was like, let me get you the quote first for what is not working, which was just a walk-in cooler, right? That's the most important one. I was like, let me get you a quote for that. Once you approve that one, then we can start going down the line and getting everything in order, right? I mean, I'm not going to fix everything in one day. I'm not going to fix everything. Like, nothing's going to be fixed overnight where it's, like, ready by, you know, they're, I think they, were, they said they were going to inspect it the next day or, or dealing with, with uh, you know, trying to open already or getting ready to open. So I was like, let me get you that quote first from just from experience with these kinds of people. Um, they talk a big game until they see the price of a good quality repair. Right. So for something like that, I don't even think I was breaking a thousand. I think it was like a $900 repair, uh, recover, cut out the pipe, replace a dryer and the pipe like to get that, that stupid valve out. Uh, do that so that we repair the leak. I told them I need to make sure nothing else is wrong with it. But for that, um, recovering, vacuuming, obviously nitrogen. Um, and like I said, the dryer, it's going to be, it needs to be topped off if I reuse any of the refrigerant. But if I don't, it's a whole new from my experience, about eight pounds of refrigerant there, you can charge a little bit more, um, but it, it's at least around eight pounds. Um, and that stuff's not cheap, right? So like after adding everything up, at least it was going to be 900 and some. We're cheap, I know. So even with that, or my mindset being, you know, we're cheap, I'm not I'm, I'm charging for everything, right? Everything, every little thing that we use, even the, the brazing and all that, all that gets factored into the price. So I was like, let me get that out to you first, right? I, I went down that night, emailed it out to him or text messaged uh, it because if you guys check out Jobbery, go down and get a um, free trial and discount for yourself. But I'm able to text them the, the quote. I'm able to see when they see the quote or when they open it. So I, he immediately saw it that night, never got a response. Um, the next day I tried uh, texting him and all this other stuff, uh, getting a hold of him, making sure he knows that we can discuss things further. If he has any concerns, if he wants to do anything else, you know, let me know. I can go do maybe the bar cooler instead and we'll, we'll charge you for that. Like 
I didn't go in that far into detail, but I was just telling him like, if there's anything else you want done first, or if, if there's anything you need to discuss with me, maybe the price, let me know because I sent you the quote, you wanted all this stuff done and I, I haven't gotten an answer. So still have not gotten an answer. And that day he was texting me during my whole call. I did not get a text back. It's been a couple of weeks now. Safe to say that we're not going to get that. They did have a maintenance guy. The maintenance guy could have could have just taken my quote and been like, oh, I'll do it, right? Whatever. So that stuff happens. We, You might have to deal with it when you first open up your business. That's all we had when we started in one major hospital. Because people ask me all the time, how do you get commercial work, this and that? Like, you might have to start somewhere. Build your brand, build your reputation, all that good stuff, right? Um, the more you have under your belt as far as experience, work before after photos make sure you take all that stuff and build up a something to show future customers like a website brochures flyers business cards anything put pictures um up do a social media thing that's the thing now everybody has social media now so anything you can in the beginning you hustle you get these these uh small places small mom and pop shops you might have to be chasing checks chasing cash down to get paid what we do is if it's a small mom and pop shop they're paying on site right after the, that right after the repairs done they'll write out a check for us cool right some of them pay cash that's cool so with these people that were paying we did one repair like i said they paid it in check for that one and then if we had gotten this one i mean it would have been another check it wasn't a big amount um but it happens when you start you get these customers unless you know people that's why i always say it's important to network so if you don't have any connections or anything like that just put yourself out there you're going to have these these businesses um the only thing i can tell you from my mistakes is charge for everything because you feel like you might or they might guilt you as well into um discounts knocking down the price uh free calls Oh, like we'll give you some food for for this call or this, or this and that, or we'll give we'll hook you up with something. That's all tempting. That happens. We've done it, and you need to charge for everything. You just make sure you charge for everything. Um, if you need to, you know, quoting out is not a big deal. Quote out your job ahead of time. Overcharge uh, an hour or two. Like I said, I just had a call right now where we ran into a whole bunch of problems. And it was going to take a little longer than what we thought. And uh, it should have been a simple in and out. But that never that's never the case. And you guys know that do this. So make sure you quote, write, charge for everything. Wire nuts, wiring, all the little things that you don't think about that you use. Make sure you pay attention to that. Because I just saw somebody post this not too long ago. Like whatever it costs to you, right? Five bucks. A dollar, two dollars, whatever it is for a job site for wire nuts and miscellaneous things. Add that up weekly, daily, however often you're doing that, giving them free things, right? How much is that at, at the end of the year? Probably a few hundred bucks, thousand bucks in wire nuts, wiring and, and, and dumb little things. Just charge for everything. Charge for your brazing, your uh, nitrogen. Charge, have all these fees factored into your... Uh, your quote this and that but i'm going off on a tangent this customer like i said left me on red not a big deal these are not the customers that we want obviously right i was trying to build a relationship with him uh, trying to help him out i had a, a bunch of other stuff lined up squeezed him in i was excited to do these uh kinds of repairs he had a lot of old equipment i love doing that kind of work just didn't work out and it, it happens uh from time to time so don't get down. Um, if that happens to you, you guys that open a business up, um, starting out or looking to start out, that first year is just that kind of, of uh, building up. Like I said, I try to help guys with my uh, podcast, my social media. If you guys ever need to ask or reach out, you can do so. I'm doing stuff for Jobber now with the, the event that they have in March. Uh, learn from others mistakes right a lot of people are willing to help you like myself like other business owners that you see that are very successful like we've been there we've done that like one of the things i can say is like i said charge for everything 
quote your stuff right. Um, if not, you're going to be losing money or chasing checks from these customers that don't want to pay. Uh, new customers, pay on site, do a deposit, figure out a way to, you know, get them to, or like you can work for them and, and not lose money. So that's it. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you got something out of it. Either way, we didn't get the bid, but uh, we have a lot of other uh, stuff to do. So remember to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you guys.